Hello and welcome to MediTalk. I am Dr. Albi Elias, a psychiatrist in Melbourne, and I will take you through this innovative series of medical talks run by M4 TV. Now, this is in fact a journey where we will explore important landmarks in medicine and some of the common medical problems that you might want to know more and of course treatments and latest advances in medicine. It's an exciting time indeed, isn't it? Stay tuned. Now MediTalk is a fortnightly TV medical show and during this talk we will have doctors as our guest. They are general practitioners and specialists practicing in various disciplines of medicine and they will talk to us. So MediTalk will run as half an hour episode every two weeks. We want to run this program from the public perspective, focusing on things that you want to know. So doctors, as they share their knowledge and experience, you can ask questions to them. And one might wonder why such a program is coming up now. Is it because of New Year or coronavirus vaccine? You may say so, but it is more than that. Now, TV health shows have been studied and analyzed. The data clearly showed that people obtained transformative medical knowledge from such programs. And people changed their lifestyles and sometimes it changed their life too. So it does help. Now, an interesting observation is that general literacy and health literacy they do not go hand in hand. For example, a survey conducted in Switzerland showed that, I mean, you must remember that people in Switzerland are, they are very well educated. Their literacy is very high, up to 99%. But they had only one third of necessary medical knowledge, according to one survey. And medical knowledge is uh, sometimes a double-edged weapon because on one side public know many things about medicine and their knowledge is accurate but on the other side the knowledge is incomplete and sometimes incomplete knowledge can be more harmful than beneficial so with meditalk we do hope to develop an understanding about healthcare system especially in australia and also an awareness in the community about common medical problems. So as the doctors talk to us, you may send some questions to us. And if you wish to answer, if you wish to discuss any particular topic that you are, you are interested in, we will try our best to include those things in this program. MediTalk, we bring this program for immigrant communities and also people living in multicultural background. You can understand that human migration bring, brings its own hurdles. And when we live in countries different from uh, where we were born, uh, we face extraordinary challenges. And one of them is to access proper medical care. Now, healthcare system is different in different places, but that's okay. There are many commonalities in developed nations. So I will briefly talk about the healthcare system in Australia. You might ask, what is special about Australian healthcare system? In what way is it different? Yes, there are many features and that's what we are going to explore in the next uh, several minutes. So stay around, please. Australian healthcare system is among the best in the world. You can see in the life expectancy here, it is nearly 84 years. And if you look at the statistics, uh, Australia has uh, the best uh, cancer survival index in the world. One of the best ind indices in the world is in Australia. For example, people with breast cancer have their best survival rate 
when they are in Australia or the second best. Now, if you look at the heart diseases, again, it is the second best in the world. So these figures uh, speak for themselves and uh, Australia is enjoying one of the best health standards in the world. So, Australian health system actually heavily relies on science, but science is not everything. Uh, we need some values in medical care. So there are certain values in Australian healthcare system. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. Number one, Australian health system is utilitarian. When I say utilitarian, it means that through this healthcare, maximum people should have maximum benefits. I can tell you an example. Melanoma is a skin cancer. When I was a medical student, this was many, many years ago, people with advanced melanoma lived only for a few months. It was a very sad story. But in the last 10 years, we have what we call as immunotherapy. And this has changed the landscape of cancer therapy. Now, people with advanced melanoma, when I say advanced melanoma, is a tumor that spread to other parts of the body. People with advanced melanoma, at least 50% of them, now live for five years or more. It's a huge advance, it's a big achievement in medicine. Now the question is, how do we people get immunotherapy? How costly it is? Can I tell you one thing? Immunotherapy for melanoma cost approximately $100,000 per course of treatment. How many people can afford this? But you know, Australian government has approved this treatment and people now do not have to pay this exorbitant price. So that is where the utilitarian principle comes. Maximum people get maximum benefits. Now, second value in Australian healthcare system is that it is egalitarian, which means that everyone has equal right to healthcare. So it's based on an equality. Again, another example, I, if I have to go to an emergency department of the hospital where I work, I still have to be in the line. I cannot bypass the person in front of me just because I am a staff member there. So egalitarian system means everyone has an equal right to healthcare. Number three, Australian healthcare system respects people's privacy and their wishes. Now confidentiality is of uh, vital importance in Australia. Again, if my friend is admitted to an hospital here, I cannot access his health information. And I might uh, get a request from my friend or family, and it's technically easy for me to access his information. I just need to type his name or the number, medical record number, but it is illegal and unethical. So confidentiality is very important. Again, there is a fundamental principle in medical care, and that is duty of care. Doctors owe duty of care towards their patients. And this is true even in emergency. And this is true even when uh, the person is known to the doctor, not known to the doctor before. Uh, you may not be a patient, for example, on a roadside or in a flight, wherever there is an emergency, doctors have to provide uh, urgent care if requested and if it is in their vicinity. Now, Medical Board of Australia uh, makes it very clear that it is a good practice and it is expected from doctors. But if a doctor provides emergency care, he or she is not legally liable 
for acts or omission when it is done with good in good faith or done uh, with good intention now the other principle is consent doctors cannot treat patients or cannot examine their patients without their permission any patient can say no to a treatment that he or she doesn't wish to have but there are two exceptions if a patient does not have a mental capacity to say no in an emergency and there is no substitute decision maker or a legal document like advanced care directives then a doctor can treat that patient without consent the second scenario is the treatment of mental disorders where a psychiatrist can detain patients in hospital wards and treat them against their wish if they do not have capacity to make decisions now another important thing that you might be interested to know is minimum age for consent parents can provide consent on behalf of their children and young people under 18 years of age in most circumstances but this is not a rule set on stone because children and young people below 18 years can consent for their treatments if it is demonstrated that they know the nature and the consequence of the treatments then there is something called entering power of attorney so a person can appoint a legal representative appoint another person as entering power of attorney and this entering power of attorney can make medical decision on behalf of this person in future when this person is no longer able to make decisions for himself now we have talked about parents consenting it is a tricky part because parents have to make decisions for the best interest of their children for example if there is a conflict between parents decision and the recommendation of a doctor then that can go to a court essentially parents have legal responsibility to maintain medical or health needs of their children now these are uh, some of the principles in uh, australian healthcare system the fundamental pillar of australian healthcare system is medicare medicare provides fee for consultations in the community including in the private setting so medicare is the backbone of australian healthcare system now we have seen some of the values of australian healthcare system now we cannot practice medicine without science that means practice medical practice in australia is based on the best available scientific evidence systems uh, that do not have a scientific basis have no role in australian healthcare system for example systems like homeopathy that, that cannot be practiced in australia under legitimate basis now when i say scientific basis in medicine i mean that the treatments that we receive were tested in clinical trials and there is a regulatory authority in australia uh, which examines the evidence for these treatments and that is therapeutic goods administration so the medications and the test and the medical decisions like when to admit a patient to the hospital are based on the best available evidence and this is scrutinized this is audited and that's the quality of healthcare system and so th th so there are values in medicine we need values for example uh, there should be a compassion towards patient care and we need science so the best practice is integrating science with 
values in medicine. There is a saying, medicine is art and science. So Australian healthcare system reflects this uh, well-cherished principle. So with uh, this, uh, I am concluding uh, this part of uh, uh, this episode of MediTalk. And in the next episode, joining us is Dr. Satyajit Kutail. He is an intensive care unit physician. You know that ICU is often the last place in medical care and none of us wants to be there, but we of course need to know certain aspects of ICU care. So in the next episode, Dr. Satyajit will talk to us about the ICU system in Australia. And uh, this is uh, a bit interesting because uh, we start our journey from ICU in contrast with uh, how we would normally expect because uh, uh, ICU is the last place, of course a complicated place, uh, but we start our journey in the reverse order. We start from ICU, then come back and then we go to other areas of interest, uh, different specialities and general practice. So we will be back on 16th January, Saturday at 2 p.m. So if you have any questions, please send them to us and our email address is meditalk at m4tv.com.au. So see you again. Thank you.